A portion of this video is sponsored by PPA. So it's been a while since the success of our first video, which garnered over 1 million views. Professor Hines and I are back with some new tips on street photography. And actually, we are putting together something special. The ultimate guide to street photography, which will be coming out at the end of April this year. It's gonna be an hour long free course available here on my YouTube channel. I'll give you more information towards the end of this video. For now, I'll let Professor Hines take it away. So one thing is it's having anticipation, basically seeing the image you want before it's actually happened. So this is an example of one where I saw this taxi cab that was driving up as I was at the corner by the World Trade Center train station. And I saw this guy gathering his things and I said, he's about to get out the taxi. So I just held the camera up and framed it and just waited. And I waited for him to get to sort of the position that I wanted him in before I took the photo. Because I felt like if it was too soon it wasn't going to be the greatest image and if it was a little bit after this I mean he's already all the way out of the car at that point but it was because you know I saw this shot happening right in front of my eyes and I was just prepared for it just like this image of World Trade Center I saw these two ladies that were eating outside the building and I wanted to capture photos where you know the building just looks so massive behind them and they're just really microscopic in the photo but then I thought hmm can I actually catch somebody walking in the frame to where I frame someone's legs in front of me but then you can still see them and that's it like there's nothing else in the frame you just see the two people there and the person walking in front in this massive train station so I was just camped out waiting for that shot to materialize. Now, of course, there are those instances where I could be camping for a while. I don't get quite the shot that I was looking for, but in this instance, I did. Now I was trying to be greedy, and I told Jason, can we get a second one like this? Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but I was happy with this. To be fair though, this would have been the second photo. I actually messed up the first one to wear us out of focus. That happens too. Yes, I do make mistakes. I'm content with that. I just move on because I ended up catching this shot, which I thought was really good. You win some and you lose some. That's how it goes. Next is do opposite of what you see others doing online. Now, why is that an, an important tip to mention? I feel like a lot of people sometimes sort of in a place to where they feel like their work may not be the greatest or they're really trying to, to just get known. They might wanna go viral or whatever it may be. And so they're not really putting themselves in their work. They're trying to be what everybody else is, but that's not true to yourself. So when I'm actually out shooting, I've gone through, I mean, we've all been there. We go through Instagram, we go through TikTok. You see all these videos, you see all these pictures of where people are in these places and you wanna go there and take pictures just like them, right? Well, I will do that, maybe take photos of something similar that I saw just to have it in my portfolio have my own version of it. But I, I don't ever specifically go to a location to replicate somebody else. I try to find what is it that I can do differently? Can I compose this differently? Can I use a different lens from them? Can I just focus on a specific region that maybe their shot was a wide photo? Maybe I go a telephoto approach, which, you know, I'm trying to do different things like that. So that way when people see my version, it's something new, it's something different. And that's how it stands out. If I'm doing what everybody else is doing, eh, it doesn't really have the same feel, right? So that's, that's why I try not to do that as much. So the next thing is being unobtrusive. Many street photographers have their own philosophy for this. Some don't mind being up front in someone's face. Whereas for me personally, I don't like doing that. I like to give people their personal space. I don't want people to feel like I'm a threat to them. I want people to feel comfortable. More importantly, I don't want people to notice me to begin with. But, you know, should they notice me, I don't want them to feel like I'm coming into their personal space in any way to where they feel like I might present harm to them or any kind of threat. So like you look at all of these images here where I'm actually on the subway, many always wonder how do you get away with taking photos like this where you're in a confined space on a train? Here in New York, it's sort of easy, I must say. I mean, we did a full production with cameras. I'm wearing a, a GoPro. Not one person noticed us the entire time, I kid you not. So New York people are a little different, I must admit. But in some of the other areas that I have gone, no one really cares or no one notices me because I don't put myself to ever be noticed. And that's very important to me. I don't do photography to, to make anyone feel like they're being threatened or anything like that. And I don't do something with other people that I wouldn't want done to myself. And you know, I just don't wanna be recognized. 
you know, that's the thing. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a very special message from our sponsor, PPA. Now, PPA is a fantastic resource to help you become a better photographer and running a photography business. They have over 900 online videos which you can watch at your own pace. And this month, they wanted me to remind you about their $15,000 worth of gear insurance. That means you get full replacement coverage with a flat $350 deductible, or you can repair your equipment with a flat $50 deductible, and you can get all these benefits here for just under $28 a month. PPA also offers data loss prevention services in case your memory card or hard drive goes kaput. Pray to the camera gods, that doesn't happen. To learn more about any of this and other benefits, check out my link in the description box below, which you can also use to get $25 off your membership when you sign up. All right, thanks for listening. I'm gonna throw it back to Professor Hines for some more fire street tips. <laughs> so the next thing is viewing everything by focal lens. Over time, I've sort of mastered the art of whatever I'm looking at, I try to analyze it based off of looking at it through a lens. Whether it's a 35, whether it's an 85, whether it's a 40, I try to visualize everything based off a of focal length. The reason for that is because, number one, I have nine prime lenses. I am not taking nine prime lenses out on the street. <laughs> I'm not doing that. At the very most, I'm usually taking three, maybe four lenses for street. So because of that, I need to know exactly what gear to actually have with me. What mindset am I in? Do I feel like, oh, I wanna photograph a little tighter today? Or maybe I have no idea what I want to do. So we're going to have my run and gun set up, have one of my cameras, you know, Aaliyah or Ariana with the 35 F2. I love that lens because it's a nice sort of walk around lens. It's not too wide, not too tight. And if I ever needed something that's wider, I can always do a panoramic. If I need something tighter, well, the camera is 50 megapixels. I don't crop too often, but if I need it to, hey, I can do that. But in viewing things by focal lens, you eliminate the guessing. And by eliminating the guessing, you now have where you're capturing more opportunities. Because once you hold that camera up to take a photo, you just take the image. You don't have to figure out, oh, do I wanna be shooting at 24? Oh, do I wanna be photographing at 70? You take away that and it saves you time and you just automatically know what you want. So the next is probably one that is a favorite of mine, and that's trying lower angle compositions. Yes, I pho photograph lower than most people, but as you look at some of these images, you kind of maybe see why I do that. I just think it's so pretty when you're actually taking a lower angle and aiming up into your subject because you see more of what's around. I usually have my camera either down at my chest or I just bring it all the way down to the ground. I love that because it just makes the image feel bigger than what it really is. I don't know, that lower angle just sits so well with me. Now it doesn't sit well with my knees, but that's neither here nor there. Now, before we move on to the next few tips, just a friendly reminder that the professor and I will be putting together a full-blown, full-process ultimate guide to street photography. From the gear to the shoot, right down to the edit. In that video, we'll be following the professor into the streets. We'll be learning about his whole thought process, his approach to lighting and composition, as well as an interactive editing tutorial that you can follow along to. Trust me, this is going to be epic. And actually, you guys have been seeing some sneak peeks in this video already. So make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel right now if you haven't already yet, and I don't often ask you guys to do this, but please turn on that bell notification to be notified when that video drops. Or just follow us both on Instagram, because I'm sure we'll be posting a lot of stories about it. We would greatly appreciate it if you guys can check it out the moment that it becomes available. Anyways, I'll let the professor wrap things up here. So the next thing is selective focus. I get asked all the time about settings and I feel like th there's no go-to settings for anything, honestly, unless you're in like, I don't know, maybe a controlled environment of doing portraits, maybe in that situation. But when you're on the street, eh, it can fluctuate to what you're feeling. You know, if you want to shoot at a wide open aperture as opposed to a stop down aperture. But with the focusing, I feel this might be something that's helpful. So with selective focus, I feel you have greater control because when you're using something wider like zone focus or wide area focusing, you have you run into the situation to where you could actually lock onto a subject that you didn't want in focus. Because when there is a lot of moving elements, it's some of the images that you see here, it's going to be hard for the camera to really know where do you want the focus to be? It's gonna be grabbing into to, to anything that it sees. Whereas with the selective focus, you can actually pinpoint where you want that focus to hit. So if a subject walks right into that position, you take the shot, it's in focus. And then a lot of the cameras now, 
have where you can actually touch the screen and move quickly where that focus point is. So it just makes it a lot easier. And that way, you know, you're gonna come away having your so subject that you want in that frame perfectly in focus. So the next thing is really not a tip as much as it is a suggestion. And that is exploring manual lenses. Why am I suggesting this? Well, for one, I feel that it sometimes slows us down to where we can actually enjoy the actual scenes that we're in, the actual places that we're at. Over the pandemic time, I decided more so switch to manual lens usage as opposed to autofocus. I was noticing that I was making significant mistakes that I typically didn't do. And I, I felt that I was becoming careless in my photography. So I decided to go back to shooting manual for a bit. And what turned into a bit has turned into a longer period to where I have favored more of the manual lenses for over two years now. And I absolutely enjoy it. I'm now taking time to actually look more into a scene and to choose a specific composition as, as opposed to, oh, that's a nice shot, let me take the picture. And then I, I just walk. I actually now have to, ooh, that's a nice shot. Let me look through because now I have to adjust the focus. I think I have more fun with photography now. I definitely enjoy it more because I feel like I'm taking more quality images. And that's why I, what I love most. That's why now, you know, I shoot with the higher megapixel camera, but I don't take as many images. And everything that I take, it has to be something that I really, really feel for me to actually take that photo. And I feel like you really become a part of the art as opposed to just taking the images and just sharing them for social media. I feel like you really build a better foundation and produce more quality work, at least for me. I feel like I have personally produced the best work of my life since I've switched to manual lenses again, and I absolutely love it. So hopefully these new additional tips are something that's helpful, something that's useful, and just gives you sort of a look into my sort of change within the last two years, and maybe there's something that, that's helpful for you. But the best thing is, is just go out, try everything for yourself and see what works for you. What do you like in your pictures? And what do you feel is 100% you? Because at the end of the day, you have to be happy with your art. Your art should be an extension of yourself because it's, it's an expression. So go out, enjoy it, and capture great art. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to both of our YouTube channels and follow us on Instagram and we will see you guys in the ultimate guide to street photography.